is now onto a matter which occupies the minds of many royal watchers. How deep is the rift between Prince William and Prince Harry? Well, it's been reported that Prince William is refusing to speak to Prince Harry and has even taken on the role of disciplinarian, which was once, of course, the job of Prince Philip. But has that job gone now to William? And does he indeed rule with a rod of iron? Well, joining me now to discuss this is the former BBC Royal Correspondent, Michael Cole himself has a lot of iron. Do you think this is a fair approximation of the character? After all, Michael Cole, surely the, the palace could do with a firm leader at the moment. Is Wills the man? I think he is, Martin, and good afternoon to you. William, uh, 42 last Friday, uh, he's grown into the role of heir apparent. He looks good, he sounds good, uh, and his role recently, in fact, at this moment with the Japanese visit from the emperor and the empress has shown his importance to the royal family, never more so than now. He does the job well, and um, he is well uh, set up to take over from the Duke of Edinburgh. Now, when the late queen was alive, she was the chairman of the board, but the chief executive was definitely Prince Philip. She was the head of state, but he was the head of the family. He chaired the Way Ahead Committee. He liaised with the security services. And he laid down the law for a long, long time. Of course, uh, the Duchess of York, Sarah Fergie, uh, was banished. And, and he also uh, used to go through the invitation lists for any royal event, striking off people he didn't want there. So he was very much in charge. And I think the situation with William is that when he makes up his mind, his mind is made up. And he's doing extraordinarily well. And he's doing it without the daily support in public of his wife, of course. Uh, and we all wish Kate, the Princess of Wales, well and, uh, and a speedy continued re recovery. And I think the king will be welcoming his older son taking this more prominent role because, quite frankly, he can't do everything. Uh, he has to cry off some of his engagements. He's doing extraordinarily well. But it's a very, very good comfort to him to know that his eldest son is stepping up. And Martin, uh, you know, it, it, there was always a bit of doubt. After the death of his mother, I know that Prince William had to think again. And then we see him with the, the emperor and empress of, of Japan. And William thought again, do, do I want to do this job? Because there's nothing in our uncodified, unwritten constitution that says anybody has to be heir to the throne. And he thought about it. He was only 15 at the time. And he decided he did, and he's done his duty, in great contrast to the man you mentioned at the top of your introduction, uh, Prince Harry. Now, I don't think there's any chance at all of there being a reconciliation with the brothers now or in the foreseeable future. It goes back to Oprah Winfrey interview, then the book Spare, uh, and all the things that were said in the Netflix six-part series. Too much bad blood. And... William is not going to forgive that, principally because he, of course, and his wife attacked personally uh, his wife, Kate. Um, uh, and even when the announcement of her, her cancer was made, uh, their, their mealy-mouthed response to it didn't show any great concern to her. Okay. Because um, William looks at them and, and he would say what most people would say. All of this is completely unnecessary. It is unnecessary. Prince Harry has, has had a wonderful privileged life. He owes everything to being a member of the, the, the royal family. He's good looking, he's married to a beautiful wife. He's got two healthy, beautiful children. He's got more money than we could shake a stick at. People who okay. are struggling, people who are battling would wonder why he's so upset. Now, Michael Cole, I'm afraid I have to wield my own rod of iron call time. It's always a pleasure to have.